everyone and welcome to Nutri Foodie and Lifestyle. So it's been a while and the month of March is almost done. Can you believe it? So both Max and I have been away for a little bit. Max needed a little bit of a YouTube break and I've been still dropping out some videos, but just not as consistent as I was probably in December and January. And the month of February was busy and March was busy too, but I was also trying to get back to me and kind of focusing on my health goals and my goals of losing weight. So and just having a one-year-old just keeps me busy. So my schedule that I have planned out is never actually my schedule. So we try our best to come on when we can and make videos when we can. So um, our schedule is usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But right now, it's any day that we can drop a video. So if you watched my last video, I said for the month of March, which is Women's History Month and International Women's Day, which was March 8th, that I was going to talk about all things related to women and the things that we go through. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about endometriosis. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard about endometriosis, so I want to talk about that briefly. And then I want to talk about somebody that we all know, Tia Maori Hardrick, or Tia Maori. And um, she's the twin. She's Tamara's twin, Tia and Tamara. And she is very adamant of talking about endometriosis and her journey and how she's been getting through it and how it caused her to have infertility and it was hard for her to get pregnant. And I'm going to talk more about that when I share the article. But the reason why I wanted to talk about that more so is because, as you know, I'm all about nutrition and that's what I studied. So um, in relation to endometriosis, Tia talks about how she used nutrition to kind of relieve her symptoms and help her to get pregnant by eating a better diet. So um, let's just jump straight into my notes about endometriosis. So I'm going to share the screen and there we go. So here we have it. So endometriosis, if you guys haven't heard of it, affects the uterus. The uterus is um, what sheds every month when we get our periods for ladies, when we get our menstrual cycles. It's the uterus lining that sheds that makes us get our periods and, you know, Getting our periods mean that we're releasing an egg so you don't get pregnant, but you release that egg and that's how you get your menstrual cycle and your monthly periods. So endometriosis affects the uterus. The tissue of the uterus lining is what um, gets, <laughs> I just heard my son screaming, that was funny. It's, um, the tissue of the uterus lining is what gets affected by endometriosis. Tissue that usually lines the uterus is called the endometrium. So the lining of the uterus is of the lining, the inside lining, I would say, of the uterus is the endometrium. That's what it's called. So that's the tissue, but in endometriosis, the tissue grows outside of the uterus. So um, other things can be affected, not only the uterus, but your ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and tissue in your pelvis can all be um, affected by endometriosis and the growth of the tissue outside of the uterus. So the, that growth can spread to all those other important reproductive organs. So um, that tissue can also spread beyond the pelvis, but in most cases it stops at the pelvis. Um, because at one point, I mean, even though I've, when I got pregnant, I went to, um, you know, the GYN, they checked everything, my ovaries, I don't have any fibroids or cysts or anything like that. And um, after I gave birth, at one point, I thought maybe I was getting endometriosis because my periods became so painful. Like, not 
extremely painful, but I would say compared to pre-pregnancy, I didn't really get any cramps or abdominal pain that much. And now I get it a lot more severely where I can feel it. But I would say mild, not severe, but I definitely feel the effects of. And then at one point I was getting like pain, like in my thighs and my legs. And I was like, why am I getting this pain like in my thighs and my legs during my period? And then, you know, we go, we all turn to Google. So I Googled that and what came up was endometriosis. And they said that if you have endometriosis, it can spread to your legs and your hips. And I was like, oh my gosh, do I have endometriosis? But I said, nobody ever told me that I had tissue growth outside my uterus. And I was just starting to panic. But um, that could be a symptom of um, endometriosis. If you get like that pain um, down in your hips or your thighs, that could mean that you have endometriosis or be a symptom of it. So um, <clears throat> endometriosis has four stages and those stages are minimal, mild, moderate, and severe. And then it says, this condition can be painful, especially during your menstrual cycle. So that's when you feel it the most, or you might feel it before you get your period. And after you get your period, it still might linger, you know, but definitely in the stages of when you're going to get your menstrual cycle, that's when all of that pain comes forward. So um, the hormones from your period can cause the tissue, the tissue that's outside the uterus, all that extra growth that happens with endometriosis, that tissue can become inflamed. The tissue grows and gets thick and eventually becomes trapped. So when the tissue can't grow anymore, it gets thick and it just stays there. There's no place else for it to go. So it gets trapped in your pelvis. And that's the reason why you get all that pain. So you can get irritation, you can have scar tissue, you can get adhesions, which is like, I would say, maybe little pockets of scar tissue too, like little, little, little pockets of scar tissue, and you'll get painful periods. Um, endometriosis can also cause you to have fertility problems like trouble getting pregnant. And I believe it can also cause irregular periods too. So there is no cure for endometriosis, but the focus is on controlling the pain from endometriosis. So that's what the focus, because a lot of people that, that's what the focus is, because a lot of people that have it says that it's very painful. And that's something that Tia Mari said for her. She said at first she didn't know, and then she had to get like, she had a first opinion, then she got a second opinion. And that doctor helped diagnose her, you know, with endometriosis. And they went, and I think they did an ultrasound and they saw she had that tissue growth outside of her uterus. And she said her periods were so, so painful. So um, I just want to talk a little bit more about the, um, the treatments. So for the treatment, you can try over-the-counter pain medications like ibuprofen, but it might not help in all cases. You can try Tylenol if you can't take ibuprofen. Um, they say in some cases you can do hormone therapy by taking like supplemental hormones can relieve and stop the pain of endometriosis. And it says hormone therapy helps your body to regulate the monthly hormonal changes that promote the tissue growth that occurs when you have endometriosis. So that's an option. And you can do hormonal contraceptives, such as birth control pill, can probably ease the pain or eliminate that pain from the endometriosis. And then um, there are other things. There's a medication called Danazol. Um, they said that that medication is used to stop menstruation and reduce symptoms. So I guess it can stop your period, but also reduce your symptoms. It says, while taking Danazole, the disease may continue to pro progress. Danazole can have side effects, including ac 
acne and hirtuism. Hirtuism means that you get abnormal hair growth in, on your face and different parts of your body. Uh, and then the last option can be surgery. So you can get surgery con to remove some of that tissue growth. And then for some women, they might have to completely get a hysterectomy if it's really, really that bad. But um, now I'm going to share the article um, about nutrition. That's why I wanted to talk about this more so because, you know, I like nutrition, everything nutrition. So I'll go through this quickly. Now I want to share the article um, with Tia Maori talking about her, her diet and how she managed her endometrial. Here we go. So this article is from health.com. So basically it says that the foods that Tia Marie cut from her diet to soothe her endometriosis symptoms. So let's scroll down. And it says the star stays, the star says a healthy eating philosophy has drastically reduced her pain. This article was in 2017. And it says food can be potent medicine, which I believe is true. Food is medicine because food has so many beneficial, beneficial things to our health that we don't know about. And we don't really think about it, but food is truly medicine. you know. And this is why it's important to eat a healthy diet and not a processed diet. Diet, diets high in fats and fast food. It's important to eat those fruits and vegetables because those nutrients that come from those fruits and vegetables can do a lot for our body. It can protect our cells from free radicals or anything that can harm or enter our cells. It's so important to have a, um, a healthy diet. Um, I'm trying to scroll down, but the computer is so... Um, Slow, it says that she was first diagnosed with endometriosis in 2006. After that, she began to experience severe abdominal pain. Endometriosis occurs when the lining of the uterus grows outside the womb. It says that this affects 6.5 million women in the United States. It, it can cause pelvic pain, cramping, heavy bleeding during periods, as well as painful sex and fertility problems. So Tia Mari went under a laparoscopic surgery and then she went, she did the surgery, I think about like three or four times. And it says over here, she had a second surgery and took birth control pills to manage her symptoms. But I guess it still wasn't helping. So her doctor suggested cleaning up her diet. So Mari then felt very hopeful. She says in her book, even though it would mean giving up some of her favorite foods at the time, she likes to eat deep fried cheese, tortellini with her signature dish, or it says was her signature signature dish because you know she cooks and she has a YouTube channel where she cooks, and um, it says but she was committed to making changes that might improve her health. She eliminated dairy, and dairy is important because dairy causes inflammation in the body. Eating lots of dairy will cause inflammation in your body. So you just have to be careful with dairy products. And I learned that when I was going through chronic pain at one time. I didn't know that dairy caused inflammation. And there's an ingredient specifically in dairy, like ice creams, called carrageen. And I'll probably talk about that in another video that really causes the inflammation and they put it in a lot of things. So you really have to read your um, ingredients in your dairy products because they put it. Now some are saying that it's carrageen free because carrageen is known to cause inflammation in the body. So it says her doctor suggested cleaning up her diet. Mari felt hopeful and um, she eliminated dairy, processed meats, packaged snacks, and refined sugar. And she began to fill her plate with plants. Think leafy greens, fruits, nuts, and seeds, fermented foods, and high quality protein, including bean, 
beans, organic animal products, and organic grass-fed meat. Grass-fed is the best, but grass-fed is also very expensive. But here and there, I try to get grass-fed when I can. Um, Mari also added sea vegetables like kelp and nori and switched what she calls safer sweets such as stevia, date sugar, and honey. So um, she said her new diet drastically reduced her pain. She also stopped getting migraines and her eczema cleared up. I started to feel deeply, deeply thrivingly alive, she writes. For the first time in my life, I understood the concept of profound wellness. And this, for with her changing her diet, it helped her to um, eventually get pregnant, you know. So this is why I wanted to really talk about endometriosis, not only because it affects women, but the way we eat can help a lot of things that we go through. And that's why it's important to eat a healthy diet. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I was trying to make it short, but I had to get through that article. But I hope that you guys all enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.